We haven't seen the last of the two biggest heroes from the galaxy far, far away. Mark Hamill and Carrie Fisher will both appear in Star Wars Episode Nine. Hamill will film new scenes as the iconic Luke Skywalker, although exactly how he'll return and in what capacity hasn't been revealed. As for Carrie Fisher, director J.J. Abrams says that they'll use unseen material of the late actress that was originally shot for The Force Awakens, which will be repurposed for the new film. There are several deleted scenes with Fisher included on the various Force Awakens Blu-rays, and there are rumors about even more unused material that has yet to be released publicly. Disney and Lucasfilm had initially stated that Fisher would not be appearing in the film, but Abrams says that they just couldn't find a satisfying conclusion without her. He hopes that this will honor her legacy, and the good news is that this means they won't have to recast her or use a CG version like in Rogue One. Filming begins tomorrow, and the film hits theaters in December 2019. I think this is absolutely the right move. I don't think that it made any sense at all to finish Episode Nine without Carrie Fisher being a part of the movie. And yes, it would have been weird to uh, CG her into um, the adventure. I think that would have been nuts. Uh, but not out of the realm of possibility. Certainly, there's lots of great D aging technology out there and they could have got a you know a look alike and tried to do all kinds of stuff there but i think and maybe they're going to do that as well but i think this is great news i'm really curious to see how they're going to use mark hamill maybe they'll do a uh, a flashback sequence where we get a little bit more explanation about the uh, the knights of ren and what happened with kylo ren and luke skywalker um i anticipate that yes we'll probably see mark hamill as a force ghost or Maybe J.J.'s got some other kind of retcon kind of idea in there, and maybe Luke Skywalker, uh, you know, zapped himself somewhere or went back in time. Right, who knows? But I'm curious. Uh, J.J.'s got a lot of work to do to appease a lot of people out there. I don't know if he's going to be able to do it. Uh, but, I, you know, I loved what he did with The Force Awakens. I still remain a very big fan of that film. So I'm very, very excited to see how he navigates through... Uh, the challenges, you know, love them or hate them, that Ryan Johnson left with episode eight. So uh, we'll find out in a little less than a year and a half. The Mission Impossible franchise probably isn't going to self-destruct anytime soon. The sixth film in the series, Mission Impossible Fallout, debuted over the weekend and earned $61 million domestically and $153 million worldwide, making it the biggest opening in the franchise's history. This is an impressive feat for a series that has been around for so long, and it's also good news for star Tom Cruise following a string of recent box office duds like The Mummy and Jack Reacher 2. This means you can expect to see more Mission Impossible movies in the coming years. Now, Tom Cruise is already he got Top Gun 2 on the way. He's got a, uh, a sequel to um, uh, Live, Die, Repeat. What the hell's the other name of the game, movie? Edge of Tomorrow, Edge of Tomorrow 2, uh, and he's uh, got some other stuff cooking, but I can't imagine that he's going to step away from Mission Impossible. He'll be, if this comes out in uh, 2021, as the recent sort of release schedules have been, Mission Impossible 7 will see Tom Cruise at 59 years of age, and I don't know if he's going to want to throw his body around as much as he's been doing, uh, but God, he's impressive in Mission Impossible 6, man. The, uh, the thing that got me, yes, the helicopter stuff was amazing, but the thing that just blew my mind is that he was navigating through traffic in Paris. Clearly, it was, you know, stunt people in cars, and they orchestrated all that. Uh, but he was whipping around without a helmet, and it was just like, holy crap, they let him do it. But they did. Guy, uh, the guy is impressive. The movie was a ton of fun. Um, I think Christopher McQuarrie and Tom Cruise are a great team together. I want more. I'm, I, I'm down for more. I'm really a big fan of that series. Um, all right. It looks like Valve is making good on their promise to start developing games again. Portal 2, Team Fortress 2, and Left 4 Dead writer Jay Pinkerton has rejoined Valve after leaving the company. Pinkerton was one of several prominent Valve writers to leave last year with other names like Eric Walpaw and Chet Falasek also departing around the same time, which followed years of Valve not making games that required a lot of writing. The fact that Pinkerton has returned indicates that Valve wants to once again start making bigger games with a strong narrative, which founder Gabe Newell promised they were going to do earlier this year. They haven't said what they might be working on, but fingers crossed for Portal 3 or Half-Life 3. Come on, Gabe! How long do we have to wait for more Half-Life? How? See, the Flash is pissed off, too. How long do we have to wait? Come on. Like, seriously, give us that announcement every E3. Blake predicts that Half-Life 3 has come. This guy's not standing. He's going to rest for the rest of this rundown. Uh, come on, buddy. We, got, we need some more Half-Life 3. We need the old Valve back. You can do it. We're all going to be there for you. 
We will wait. Okay. <laughs> There's some bad news and at least one bad movie coming to Netflix. The streaming giant has officially confirmed that the third season of their hit series Stranger Things has been delayed until next year. It was originally hoped that the new season would arrive this fall, but Netflix programming executive Cindy Holland says that they need more time, but promises that it will be worth the wait. A short teaser video for the new season showing off a new mall location was released earlier this month. As for movies, Netflix has bought the rights to the new live-action Jungle Book film Mowgli from Warner Brothers Pictures. The film, which marks the directorial debut of actor Andy Serkis, was slated to hit theaters this fall, but will now skip the big screen and will be available exclusively on the streaming platform. This means that Warner Brothers probably thinks Mowgli won't be a financial success, and it wouldn't be the first time a studio has passed a dud off on Netflix. Earlier this year, Paramount released the Cloverfield Paradox on the service, which was critically panned. Yeah, not a good sign for Mowgli. Uh, I love Andy Serkis. I think the guy's a tremendous talent. I'm excited to see what he has conceived here. But yes, it doesn't bode well that it's coming to Netflix. And it sucks that we already start to think along those terms. If a movie is kind of going in one direction and then suddenly the studio says, nah, it's better if it's uh, it's it's the new director video is what it is. Uh, but we'll see. Maybe we'll be surprised and Mowgli will be a lot of fun. All right, that does it for our rundown today. You guys rock. Now it's time for This Day and Everything Cool.